Good morning. We're here again in our uh, uh, devotion and the title is uh, On Mission Living. Living with a purpose and our passage is Acts 20, 24. Now this is uh, uh, Captain John with his uh, company uh, Uniship Incorporated since 1986. So in his um, uh, in the uh, Facebook that I uh, check it says here that uh, happy 36 founding anniversary uni ship and that's uh, already 30 years ago and now the, uh, the company is celebrating the 36 anniversary and uh, according to this uh, Sorok Uni Foundation uh, website Today, Uni Group of Companies conducted community service outreach program at Sorok Uni Village in Barangay San Jose and Antonio Quezon. And so you see, uh, this company partnered with the uh, Sorok Uni Foundation, which is a foundation founded by uh, uh, the company or by uh, Elder Jang himself and his uh, friends. And uh, according to the website or the uh, FB page, Sarok Uni Foundation Incorporated works for our forgotten neighbors, homeless, urban, and uh, rural poor, and persons affected with, by leprosy. And also, they provide scholarship for the families and even extended to other uh, people. What I uh, see here is that uh, this uh, company founded by uh, Captain John is uh, doing not only to earn but at the same time to serve and so they founded this uh, Sorok Uni Foundation so even in their anniversary they are serving this uh, community now let me show Elder John as uh, an elder in uh, the church Manila New Life uh, Church and uh, this is the ceremony of uh, his uh, retirement as an elder for 23 years in that uh, church, Manila New Life uh, Church. Um, he was there for uh, many years and uh, that church helped me uh, and even Elder Jang, you know, in my uh, studies at the Oxford Center for Mission Studies in UK. And when I uh, check uh, this uh, celebration wow it's already 23 long years of uh, serving the lord what i see in the life of uh, our brother elder jam is that um, he served he has uh, a life purpose he did not just exist but uh, he is on a mission and he accomplished uh, many things for the good of many and uh, for the glory of God now the words of uh, Apostle Paul however I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me the task of testifying the gospel of God's grace. Now we can see here Paul also having his own mission. And uh, I hope and pray that all of us, we have our own uh, mission and we are uh, purpose-driven or mission-minded uh, people. And uh, based on this uh, passage, we ask this question. What is a mission-driven life based on Acts 20, 24? Is your life purpose-driven, mission-driven? Are you living with a mission, uh, with a purpose? So we, add this, we, add the, we ask this question. What is a mission-driven life? And uh, based on our passage first, you are living with a mission. You have a mission. And Paul himself has a mission here, uh, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Paul himself experienced the grace of God. And now he wants to be, to be a witness, to testify. He has been very, very zealous with uh, his mission before 
conversion before coming to Christ. He was very zealous uh, in uh, Judaism as uh, one of the Pharisees and uh, he he was very zealous in persecuting the Christians who were followers of Jesus Christ at the time. But then Jesus, God himself, turned around, turned him around and he was converted and now he was very zealous in testifying about the grace of God in his life. He experienced the work of God, the, the transformation, transforma, uh, transformation of uh, himself, you know, because of the grace of God. He was uh, uh, testifying or telling other people. That's uh, his uh, main mission. That's why he became a missionary going here and there to testify about the gospel of God's grace. When he said this one, this is uh, before the elders of Ephesus. He was going to Jerusalem and he called the elders of the of, of Ephesus of the church where he uh, planted and he taught them for uh, two years there. He stayed there for two years teaching and he called them to come and meet him because uh, he's saying goodbye to them. And he said, I may not uh, see you again. You may not uh, see my face again uh, because uh, he is uh, on his way to Jerusalem and he did not know what will happen. Now, uh, if we are going to, to see uh, Acts 20, 21, uh, this is what uh, Paul said earlier, solemnly testifying to both Greek, uh, Jews and Greeks of repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is uh, his uh, testimony, his uh, witness. He was uh, uh, telling people, you know, at the time, Jewish people or non-Jewish people, that they will repent and have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's uh, the twin, uh, twin sides of uh, conversion. You have, rep you have repentance and uh, you have faith. You repent and you believe. You repent of your sins and you believe. Uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the main message of uh, Paul preaching uh, that they can receive, people can receive repentance and faith because of what Christ has done on the cross. And that's the gospel of uh, God's grace. I have a professor, uh, my teacher, when I was in Bible college, uh, he was teacher, then he became a pastor. And now a missionary in Palawan, so he was there for uh, more than a year now among the people roaming around teaching and helping uh, people that they may know about the Lord Jesus Christ. So he is bound on a mission. His life is uh, mission-minded. When uh, Earlier he was teaching in the seminary, then later he became a pastor in the church and then uh, a missionary. His life is... Uh, for the service of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the question that we are asking is, what is a mission-driven life based on Acts 20, 24? And uh, you can see here uh, Paul uh, living with a mission. And the second is this, you aim to finish your mission. If you are a mission-minded person, you aim to finish your mission, not just to start, okay? This is what uh, Paul said. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord has given me. So the mission, the task that the Lord has given him, that's his mission from the Lord. He wanted to finish. He wanted to complete. You see, he compared this mission as a race to be finished and a task to be completed. Okay. His aim was to finish, to complete the task the Lord has given him, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Then uh, in uh, another uh, book he wrote in uh, Timothy, he said, I have fought the good, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You see, towards the end of his life, he said, I have finished the race. 
So, Paul here is not commending himself for having run the full distance. Rather, he is describing what the grace of God has enabled him to do. Because of the grace of God, he was able to finish the race. He was able to complete the task God has entrusted upon him. And so, you see, the, the aim was not only to be zealous at the beginning and then fade away. No, he was uh, persistent, you know, in the midst of pain and suffering. He continued on because his aim was to finish the race. I have a, um, a schoolmate before who uh, he called himself Louis the, the Black Man. He is from Africa. And uh, in one of our talks, he said, Lawrence, you should have a goal and follow it slowly until you fulfill it. Without a goal, you don't, you don't have a direction. So it's important to have a goal. And uh, it sinks in my mind, you know. And so uh, I pursued my studies. But at the same time, I always return back to my uh, thinking of what really God wants me to do. Even after, uh, during the pandemic, I was praying. I said, Lord, uh, some of my friends, you are calling them home, home. Some of my acquaintances, they are calling, they are calling them home. And I asked, will you call me home during this pandemic? If I pass through this pandemic, Lord, what do you want me to do? And uh, in my uh, meditation of this uh, passage of this verse, I always go back to the call that God has uh, um, done upon me, that He called me to serve Him in the ministry and this is the fulfillment of my life and I need to go on to aim to finish it by the grace of God. And this is uh, my uh, uh, teacher in the seminary who said, you start well and end well because uh, many times some ministers or some people they start well but they did not end well. They did, not, they did not finish well. Uh, even some people just start the project and then did not uh, uh, finish it. See, but Paul himself, you know, he was aiming to finish and he did really finish the race. He completed uh, towards the end of uh, his life. Here's a story of uh, one uh, from Tanzania who competed in a uh, um, a running a, a, uh, like a summer o olympic um, in uh, mexico long time ago and uh, he he was one of the more than 70 people who competed in the uh, running marathon and he met uh, like accidents on the way you know he had uh, cramps and later on he fell so you can see the bandage you know um, and uh, other others who who were running uh, stopped running they quit but uh, he himself continued on and uh, he was very very late and there was already the winner um, and uh, people already were going to the let's say place to award the medal so people were there but then there was a news that after more than an hour one hour and uh, you know you can still see somebody coming and so the news uh, uh people they they returned back to to catch you know to catch him you know by their video and uh, waited for him uh when he arrived the, the few people who were there, they cheered and they clapped. And the news, uh, uh, the media asked uh, him, you see, you already very late, you know, more than one hour. Uh, we, we have already a winner. Why did you not quit? Others were quitting. You did not quit. But uh, he replied like this, my country did not send me 5,000 miles to start the race. They sent me 
5,000 miles to finish the race. So that's the words of uh, John Stephen Aquari. Not just to start the race, but to finish the race. Not just to start the project, but to finish it. Not just to start your mission and then did not pursue it. Paul, he was aiming to finish the race, to complete the task. And by God's grace, he did it. Hallelujah. And I hope and pray that we do also whatever mission that God has entrusted upon us. What is a mission-driven life based on Acts 20, 24? The third point is this. Your life is subordinate to your mission. If you are mission-minded, your mission is greater than your life. This is uh, what Paul said. Uh, before 24, we have 23. And uh, he said, uh, I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. So you can see difficulties, you know, uh, was there on the way as revealed by the Holy Spirit to Paul. But then he said, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord has, Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. You see, his mission is more or, or greater than his life. He said, my life is worth nothing in comparison to this great mission to testify about the gospel of God's grace. My life will pass on earth, but this mission, many will be saved. So this is greater than his own life. Let me illustrate, you see. I uh, saw uh, in the war between uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine and many people were defending their countries. The Ukrainians, they were defending their country and uh, uh, when you you look at the interviews, you listen to interviews, uh, Ukrainians were saying, you know, we have to defend our uh, families, you know, it's, 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 uh, you know, they're, they're cold and they said, are you afraid? And they said, of course, but we need to go on. And uh, it's it also interesting because uh, when their president Zelensky invited the International Legion of Fighters, many responded. And so we have here uh, like a tennis uh, pro returns to Ukraine to join fight against Russia. Even dozens of Japanese volunteers have answered Ukraine's call for help. It is fighting. Americans volunteering to fight for Ukraine. 30,000 foreign nationals looking to join to fight in Ukraine. And uh, veteran ready to fight for Ukraine. Meet a British veteran going to Ukraine. Former American uh, paratrooper uh, joins uh, fight uh, in Ukraine. And uh, five fighters set to join Ukraine forces battling against Russia. Right, so we can see uh, non-Ukrainians wanting to join to help the people of Ukraine. And uh, when asked by the media, uh, why are you going there? We want to defend, you know, democracy, we want to help them. They need help. And uh, are you afraid to die? Of course, but uh, they are willing to die for the sake of uh, the mission, their mission. So this is an illustration of... Uh, if you have really a big mission, bigger than your life, you are willing to sacrifice your life. And that's Paul himself. In the midst of pain and suffering, and even the coming death because of uh, uh, persecution, you know, later on Nero cut his head. But then he went on to finish the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Um, this is uh, the Ghost of Kiev. Uh, he was uh, very popular at the, uh, in those days because uh, he was on a mission to defend his country, but later on he died also. He gave his life for his uh, countrymen. We have here uh, Peter himself, you know. Jesus Christ uh, predicted how he died, but he then, he, even though he, he knew 
he would die uh, like Jesus Christ on the cross. He persisted on to finish the mission. God called him for a mission. I remember uh, Dr. Doy Castillo, um, and I read his uh, work. Uh, what what he wrote, uh, he testified when uh, he was reflecting that uh, he has many ministries, but actually there is only one ministry, and this is the ministry of the Lord. And so he said, "Lord, can I join your ministry?" And God, you know, blessed his ministry. And. Uh, Doy, Pastor Doy, finished, you know, his service, and he went to the Lord. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but all, but to all who have longed for his appearing. Hallelujah. After finishing the race, after finishing the task, he said, there is a crown of righteousness. There's a reward to those who complete, to finish the task God has given them. And he said, not only to me, but to, to all who, uh, who long for his appearing. So when you finish your task that the Lord has given you, your mission in life, there is a crown of righteousness. There's a reward. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us of uh, um, the mission that you have entrusted upon us, just like Paul, to testify about the goodness of your grace and help us to, to really be a witness, to tell others of your goodness, of your tra transforming grace, that you can change people. Even though they are sinners, you can turn them into saints, Lord, because of your grace. We thank you that uh, we are reminded again. And we know that you promise to be with us always as we continue to do our mission. And uh, we need your help, your inspiration. We pray for uh, those who are listening, whatever their situation now or mission, we pray for them. Many more will come to know you. Many more will come to experience your love and care and grace. Many more will come to glorify your name. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.